Hi everybody, Dr. E here, the Physics Ninja. Uh, today I want to look at a previous problem that I did using Kirchhoff's laws. Uh, I solved this circuit here that I got on the screen uh, using the loop rule and uh, the junction rule. Uh, today I want to show you how to do it using a Thevenin equivalent network. It's a really powerful uh, technique that engineers often use to simplify circuits, and I'll show you how to apply it to this particular example. Again, if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you like my channel, consider subscribing. All right, let me show you how to set this problem up. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this circuit here in the top right corner, and my goal is going to be to find the current for this particular problem. You could pick any resistor. I'm gonna focus on this three ohm resistor just for this example, and I wanna find how much current is flowing through here. If I can find how much current is flowing through it, then, then I can easily calculate what is the power dissipated by this three ohm resistor. Uh, I can write that as three multiplied by I squared. I can also find the voltage across the three ohm resistor. That would simply be three times the current. Okay, so you can do a lot once you know the current flowing through it. And the way I'm gonna do this now, instead of using Kirchhoff's laws in order to solve this circuit, I'm gonna use an equivalent th uh, Thevenin ne network, which is represented here on the left-hand side. And basically, the theorem says that any combination of resistors and voltages can be represented using a, an equivalent network like this. So the first thing we do is we're going to look at one particular resistance. In this case, it's this one. So using the equivalent network, well, I'll just write this as my three ohm resistor. That one remains unchanged. The theorem basically says that all of the rest of this circuit, so every other component here, let's kind of shade it over here, the rest of this network can be simplified and represented by one battery that is in series with one resistor. Okay, now we give names to these to this battery and this resistor. This is going to be our Thevenin equivalent power supply, and this is going to be our Thevenin resistance. Now, the nice thing about this is once you have an equivalent circuit like this, if we are asked to solve how much current is actually flowing through the 3 ohm resistor, that's very simple because you can simply apply Ohm's law to this. And applying Ohm's law to this simple circuit is very easy because the equivalent resistance is simply our Thevenin equivalent resistance and our 3 ohm resistance. Therefore, the total current is simply using Ohm's law again is our Thevenin voltage divided by the total resistance. Very easy to solve this. And you can do this for any resistance here. You're going to get the same looking circuit. However, the values of V Thevenin and also the Thevenin resistance are going to be a little bit different. All right, so here's our problem now. Our problem is, is reduced to finding V Thevenin and R Thevenin. So to find V Thevenin, it's very straightforward. Remember, we were looking at the three ohm resistor and we were replacing the rest of this with that equivalent Thevenin network. So all we're gonna do now is we're going to just kind of get rid of that resistance. And let me just kind of draw this a little bit nicer. So this is called an open circuit now. I've replaced basically that three ohm resistor and I've replaced it basically with an infinite resistance. And what I wanna do now is I wanna find what is the voltage here between point A and point B. So V Thevenin is often f written as being equal to this open circuit, okay? And open circuit voltage is the voltage difference between points A and point B. Well, if you notice now, that's also the voltage across this one ohm resistance. So if we can actually find what the voltage across the one ohm resistance is here for this simplified circuit, right? It's much simpler than the previous one because there is no current flowing down here in this branch, there's no current here. So that becomes pretty straightforward, right? So to get the current over here um, in this simple circuit, again, you simply have three resistors that are in series with each other. So you know what the total resistance is. So the total resistance for just that bit is going to be two plus one plus four, gives me seven ohms. Okay, and then if I wanna find the current, well, the current now in this simple circuit is simply the voltage, which is 20, and divided by the total resistance, which is seven. So that's the current flowing through now, thrown up here, flowing here in this kind of, uh, in this limit where you have this open circuit over here. 
So the next thing, all we wanted to do was find what is this open circuit voltage. And again, the open circuit, which is going to be equal to the voltage across this one ohm resistance, simply the value of the resistance, which is one, multiplied by the current, and the current is 20 over seven. Okay, so that's very easy. It's 20 divided by seven volts. That is the value of V thevenin. That, that case is pretty straightforward. That's what we're going to represent in our previous circuit that we wrote. So now what you have to do now is find what R thevenin is. And that one is also pretty straightforward. Again, you take the limit now when the resistance that you were looking at is going to be infinite. So you have this open circuit again. And you're looking at points A and B. Now the only other difference here for this case is instead of resolving a circuit problem involving this 20 volt battery, all you have to do for this case is are all the batteries are replaced by, you basically short out all the batteries, which means you replace all those ideal EMFs with wires that have no resistance. And now to find the equivalent or the Thevenin resistance for this particular network, all we have to do now is find the resistance between points A and point B. So to find the resistance between point A and point B, you notice that the two and the four ohm resistance are on the same branch now, right? So that's equivalent to six ohms. And I have six ohms that is now in parallel with a one ohm resistance. So that's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is use my equation for equivalent resistance in parallel. And that's going to be one over six plus one over one, which is one over six plus six over six, seven over six. All right, so my equivalent resistance, the equivalent resistance between point A and B, this is the definition of our Thevenin resistance. And this value here is simply going to be 6 over 7 ohms. All right, now let's go back to our simplified equivalent network, my Thevenin network, and substitute our values here. And let's go ahead and find what is the current flowing through that 3 ohm resistance. If we go back now to the Thevenin equivalent network, we solved our voltage, which is 20 over 7. And we solved the Thevenin resistance, which was 6 over 7, which means right away I can find what the current is. So... Let's find the total equivalence here. The total equivalent resistance now, I simply have six over seven, that's in series with a three. Uh, six over seven plus three, which is six over seven plus uh, 21 over seven. 27 over seven ohms, okay. Now you can find the current. Uh, the current is simply thy voltage, which is 20 over seven. And that gets divided by the equivalent resistance, which is 27 over seven. All right, those sevens cancel out. And what you're left with at the end is 20 divided by 27, which gives me approximately 0 0.74 amps. And that's exactly the same result I obtained uh, using Kirchhoff's laws. So we know the current now flowing through this three ohm resistance again if I wanted to, I could then solve for the power and solve for the voltage across that three ohm resistance. So it's kind of a really powerful network, right? You simply pick the resistance that you want to isolate, put it in this equivalent network, and all you have to do then is use the method to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance and the Thevenin voltage. And then it's a very simple circuit to solve. So I would try out this problem using one of the other resistors, see if you can do it. Compare your answer to Kirchhoff's laws and you'll be well on your way to understanding this.